Okay, so working within this vector program, we can look at what we've built so far. And just by clicking, we can see the properties of each thing. So the properties of oops, of this fish head that I drew, it has a, a border right now. But if I wanted to change that to be to being a filled in, I would turn on the the color background option and I'd make it solid black. And then I would turn off the one pixel border. Now the problem with that, of course, is that I have to uh, make that X in there. And how can I do that? How can I cut out a shape within this filled shape? And I actually don't know how to do that yet within this program. but I do know how to do it in Illustrator. But for, for our purposes and for what we need today, what we can do is make a white shape on top of the black shape, right? So if I go to the different shape tools, there is an X already there. I'm going to go ahead and build one, hold down shift so it's nice and clean. Try to center it using my grid. Right, and then I'm going to shift its color to pure white, the upper left-hand corner. So even though this isn't purely just black shapes, this is now black cutout shapes with a white cutout shape on top. Once we get rid of our sketch underneath, or not get rid of it, but turn it off, you'll see that it gives us the same kind of logo. The, the same approach. Okay, so now we have one complex shape done. What can we do about the other complex shapes? So can we use what we've learned with the pen tool, where we just drew this shape from nothing, to modify these shapes? Can we curve the, uh, the rounded ellipse? And if we double click on it, if we just click on it, we'll see icons, right? And then if we click, if we double click and we pull um, different anchors, we have control that way, right? But we have to make sure to click on the anchor. But then in order to get it to curve, I actually need to add an anchor point. And you do that by clicking on the path. So I'm going to add an anchor point there and pull it down. Add an anchor point here and pull it down. And this is just a matter of personal preference, but I find it a little bit easier, just like I did with the head, to start with everything being straight and then double click and convert it to curves after the fact and then modify those curves somewhat, right? So I'm double clicking to turn to curves. And then I can move the whole thing into place. And when the whole thing's in place, then I can scale it and rotate it all together. So maybe like that. So let me see how I like how that looks. I'll turn off the image. Yeah, that looks better than this, right? I think I've lost a little of the perfect symmetry, so I can use the grid, double click on it, see all the anchor points, and see what might be a little off. And it's okay if these aren't 
picture perfect. We're just learning these new programs for sure. There's also the inner curve that I can round out. That might be nice. Yeah, that's looking cleaner. And then I can stretch it out a little bit on each side. And then center it. Yeah. And then once you like it, then the beauty of digital is I can duplicate it, you know. Right click on it, duplicate move it in place maybe get rid of this one i have to unlock these previous paths in order to delete them and you can right click to delete but you can also just select it and then hit your delete key so i center that but now i, I might also make it smaller and i can hold down shift and option That doesn't do exactly what I wanted it to do, but holding down shift does scale it smaller. And then I can duplicate that by right clicking, duplicate, move it up, make it a little bit smaller. And recenter it based on the grid. And I'm just trying to get the the gapped size from end to end to be equal. Okay, so if I turn off my sketch, that's what I have now. It's kind of nice. I don't love the the teardrop fins. I'd like to widen those out a little bit, so let's double click. Let's double click and let's alter them. I can flatten them out a little bit more on one side than the other. Whoops. I can hold down shift and change the uh, the curve on one side. I can hold down option and change i guess it's command let's see yeah and change the angle of the curve on just one side so just to make it a little bit funkier you have a lot of control of these shapes but it takes some practice to get there And if I want to curve it in, I can do that. If I want to move the point, I can do that. There we go. Hmm. Yeah. Something closer to that, so that I can then rotate a little, stretch out, maybe flatten the back of. I want it to echo the curve of this rib. I might actually pull this one out just a little bit on each side. Then if I like that, I can decide, well, I want to get rid of this one. And I want to flip this, or duplicate it first, of course. Flip it, and then move it on over. So we're not trying to do any work we don't need to do.
Okay. It's looking better. And then same thing. I want to modify this. And probably just draw my own. Because just by layering those two shapes, I have that little divot. That would be tricky to try to get rid of. I could double click and I could try to stretch it so it's even like that. But then in terms of the points, well, this might work. Let's see. Oops. Might be an elegant solution. Yeah, I need to. Go back. Come on. All right. Let's leave this page. I don't need this example open anymore. It is doing a good job of saving my work as I go. I don't love that they don't have titles but yet, but I can do that once I download it. All right, so some of these questions. How do you add anchor points again? And let me show you with this. Vector tries to be as straightforward as possible. So you don't actually need to click on the pen tool to access the pen tool features. Whenever you manipulate an anchor, you're basically using pen, pen tool features. So to add one, you double click on any shape or path. And that will show you anchors. And then all you have to do to add one is click on the path wherever you want to add one, and it will be added. And then in this case, even though this was a, an ellipse, I'm modifying the ellipse. I'm just going to double click on this path to change it from a curve back to straights. And it's actually just like Illustrator, made to be used with a mouse or with a trackpad, not with a tablet. It's all about precisely clicking where you want to click. Now I'm going to click on this and then hold down shift and click on the other one. I'm hoping I can select them both. There we go. Because they feel like they're not quite centered. I'm trying to find that center line. There we go. So now, based on my sketch, this is the vector I've come up with. Let me see if it holds up. Yeah, it's pretty clean. It works pretty well. The curves aren't exactly the same. And then I haven't done this part yet. Right? I'm trying to decide if I like that that crown or if I should just draw it straight. So if I'm not sure, that's done with two um, ellipses just overlapping each other. What I can do is just turn those off without deleting them, right? Lock them. Lock everything else because I'm pretty happy with everything else. And now I'm going to use the pin tool directly. So this is the only time you really need to click on the pin tool is when, when you want to make a whole new shape. And I'm going to use the grid just like I did for the, the fish head a little bit more directly. So I might make the tail a little bit bigger. Find that center point just like I did with the fish head. Make this kind of chevron shape. Double click it. 